Virginia Tech faces lawsuit after soccer coach benches woman for standing for the national anthem. This is Virginia Tech soccer. Black Lives Matter, Kirsten Hennig, Charles Adair. And uh, I'm going to call this story, I have a really nice really nice vi- title for the video version of the story, which is, which I'm recording right now. Virginia Tech demands female soccer players don't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Virginia Tech soccer, Black Lives Matter, Kirsten Herrick, Charles Adair. And this is Virginia Tech hates the national anthem. That's really, that's really what it comes down to, which is not a good sign when you're a publicly funded school and you hate the national anthem. It's not good at all. Virginia Tech soccer coach benches woman for refusing to support BLM. And this is my commentary. This is a brief, and this is a very popular story. That's why it's, it's the, this is the most popular story from yesterday, so that's why we're talking about it. It is now considered ca- cancelable to stand for the national anthem, at least if you play soccer for Virginia Tech. It seems one fascistic, and I don't know if I want to call them fascists, so I'm trying to say fascistic. They're certainly in the fascistic, the fascist type of uh, of. Uh, mindset i'll say bellicose coach has decided to use his considerable power advantage and blm support privilege to demonize a female soccer player and remove her from any opportunity to play a team sport in the college of her choosing this is not an american folks i mean he's an american citizen and i don't want to deny his american citizenship but he's not an american in the in the in the in the ethne sense of the word in the in the nation sense of the word and we are an ethne not a biological ethne we are an ideational ethne in which we all share one one king and that king is the bill of rights if you're christians you're one one thing is christ and you're if, if you're christians in the natural here i don't know, I really like the word i say civic given the civic the one king that we can all agree upon believer or non-believer alike is is king bill the bill of rights this person clearly doesn't stand for that. This is a man who is far more aligned with Chairman Z than Thomas Jefferson and should not be coaching or teaching in any American school. And I should have qualified that, any, any American publicly funded school, not necessarily any American school uh, at any level. Unfortunately, it is ungodly, un-American, fascist like this man. Uh, well, fascist like, uh, like this man that are getting preferred treatment by our corporations and governments in the age of BLM. From the college fix, soccer coach wants everyone treated with respect except players who oppose Black Lives Matter. And so this soccer player is suing the college. And this is an excerpt from Claire Anderson of College Fix. A student at Virginia Tech filed a lawsuit against her coach after he retaliated after she would, wouldn't would kneel during the national anthem. Claire, Charles Chugger, the soccer coach, wanted players to support Black Lives Matter and George Floyd before a game in September 2020. He even changed the names on the jersey to list the names of alleged victims of racial injustice. It came while the Atlantic Coast Conference mandated diversity training for student athletes and staff. The unity statement called for, quote, dignity and respect, unquote, for all people. But the lawsuit alleged that Coach Adair did not extend his respect for BLM to players who oppose it. While Adair supported Black Lives Matter, at least one of his players, Kirsten Hennig, did not. But according to this lawsuit, Hennig had to kneel for the national anthem if she wanted to play. As a result of her coach's actions, Hennig can no longer play the game she loves, the federal lawsuit alleges. And this is... I, I don't. I, I. I don't know. Maybe by next week I'm going to have it. I might have a little thing. It's just going to say Isaiah 32:7, because all of this is over and over again. I, Isaiah 32:7. As for the scoundrel, his devices are evil. He plans wicked schemes to ruin the poor with lying words, even when the plea of the needy is right. This is how I view BLM, Black Lives Matter, the group, the organization, and I, and I and I and I and I offer much critique. To, to the Black Lives Matter organization. And when I do, I try to. I don't always do this, and when I don't, forgive me. But I, I, I try to remember that I need to, well, I, from my Christian perspective, I need to balance out something when I speak about the BLM, Black Lives Matter organization, and my scorn for what it represents. Most of the human beings that support Black Lives Matter 
that are black. I'm not talking about the white BLM supporters. I have a different view of them. But the black BLM supporters, these folks are coming from a real position of pain and suffering that is not being met by any political party, whether it's Republican or Democrat for that matter. And so I, I have a lot more grace and understanding as to why black Americans might be gravitating towards the Black Lives Matter organization, especially given what I understand about human beings who have, on a daily basis, far more energy that must be spent just on making sure they have enough food to eat on a day-to-day, week-by-week basis. I don't live in that world. I'm, I'm not rich by any stretch of the imagination, but I certainly don't live in a world where I literally have to worry about a roof over my head or where I'm going to eat. And so I have plenty of, of space and time and energy that I can put into understanding the world on my terms, standing on my own, or I like to say rather um, I'm stewarding my own preferences, I'm stewarding my own beliefs than, than most human beings do in America, let alone in the world. So there's this huge group of human beings that all they have is pain and suffering. And there's one organization out there. They say Black Lives Matter. And that's that that that's a phrase that resonates with black Americans. Well, I want to speak for black Americans, obviously. But but I, I my, my my theory is that it's a it's a it's a phrase that res- resonates with black Americans because so much of American history up to the current day, not all of it, but so much of it sends the opposite message that black lives don't matter. So I want to I want to put that calendar out there if you're and I know uh, we've gotten a couple comments here and there from and, and and really good constructive comments from from black Americans who are Black Lives Matter supporters offering critique to some of the stuff we're offering. And and if you're if you're one of those folks, if you ever want to have a conversation with me, I'd love to have a conversation with 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 you folks. Uh, I don't have much sympathy and empathy and understanding for the top level leadership because I think they understand what they're doing. And what they're doing is they're co-opting real needs, real pain and real suffering. And they're using phraseologies that in and of itself could be very redemptive and healing. And they're turning into something very vile, very, very disgusting, something that is meant to keep human beings from coming to to resolution from from reconciling with one another from human beings being able to 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 face the sins of our past so that we can come to this reconciliation uh, reconciliation if you will a form of reparation not 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 how the democrat party uses reparations as a weapon of war against all americans but uh, at any rate i want to make sure uh, that uh, that if you're watching this that you, you, you're not demonizing all of the human beings that support the BLM, especially black Americans. I guess I'll leave it at that.